Hi there, bit fans. Welcome to Andy's Beer Reviews. Yes, <laughs> review number two today. Uh, technically, review number one. Second beer, though, on camera. Um, don't uh, don't call it a, co a comeback. Is a farmhouse a pale ale from Lost Cause Brewing in Castleford, just uh, just over the what over the way. Uh, comes in at four point five percent. Yeah, four point five percent um, ABV. Let's um, crack it open. Let's see what this one is like, shall we? It's going to be everywhere then for a second. Um, hit the like button if you like the video, much appreciated. Um, if you're new around here, consider subscribing. If you're already a subscriber, consider hitting the uh, little notification bell just to get notifications when a beer review goes uh, goes live. Well, that was dirty. I wanted to stick in the can. Do apologise. Um, so it's a um, Farhouse Pale Ale. So I did have a look at the label because traditionally they are uh, farmhouse pale ales because of the over nowadays it's mainly because of the yeast um, the, the yeast that you use so that I'm going to use um, the saison yeast or uh, key vike um, yeast um, so one of them will a yeast like that will be in this beer, I am sure, which gives it its name, its farmhouse. So originally, farmhouse beers, um, you probably all know this, don't you? Farmhouse beers were brewed by farmers, or brewed for farmers, on farms. I think it was for the workers. And traditionally, they do one uh, late summer um, for, the, for the harvest, and they'd also do some um, darker winter ones as well, potentially. Um, just for the, that festive, partly because of that, that festive um, that festive period. So that's kind of how they've come along. Um, in Norway, where these were initially, originally developed, anything in the farmyard or around it went into it. So, you know, mosses, um, berries, you name it, they went, in, they went into it. And these yeasts were, I think, that, I think, um, Kivike, Kivike, sorry, is a natural occurring yeast, um, and typically most of them in that in the Norwegian area were brewed with that yeast. Hence the reason why modern days that's the yeast they use. And I think its brews get right around at a lower temperature. Never remember. Uh, being a glass then, it has poured a hazy. Hazy golden colour. It, it, it's actually, I don't know, it's going to, it's not really coming through on camera, but it's a really bright golden colour. A little bit of sediment at the bottom, don't care about that. Oh, that's the flavour. And a beautiful, uh, fluffy white head. Let's get the aroma, that I can smell citrus on the pour anyway. Now, I've accidentally seen the back of this, so. I guess you can smell the citrus anyway, but I did notice it's, it's got the word pear in there. And there is like a spicy... Yeah, I don't know if I just noticed it as a pear. But I'll take the brewer's word for it. They know about brewing better than I do. So there's a spicy note, a little pear. It is a little bit like pear drops though, I suppose, yeah. Smells really nice though, right, let's taste it. Cheers everybody. Whoa. That's a good beer. See, one of the things I keep saying about supermarket IPAs and pale ales, do something different. I keep saying you know, different hops or different yeasts or play about with the malts or do something different. Make it taste a little bit different. And that's what people like these do. They've done they've done exactly that, and the, the stuff I've been drinking recently from Red Rock as well. They just take a, a traditional um, beer style and, and just tweak it a little bit. Just do something a little bit different. It, it does wonders, it does absolutely wonders.
there's a nice rich citrus flavour in there but there's also a real rustic rustiness to it real earthiness to it as well which I'm guessing therefore must be the uh, Kivike yeast that's doing that it's a little bit drying which is a traditional thing you get with that yeast as well so that would be my my guess and I might be wrong I've not drunk a lot of these beers but it's kind of suggesting that that's what it is little pepperiness a little bit of spicy bitterness on the back end it's really nice it is a really nice beer this is one of those beers I might, in fact I might run these through that little um, Aldi beer dispenser I might buy another one because um, I bet on cask I bet but you get a little bit of added smoothness to it I bet this is unstoppable Yeah, it's a bit like the aroma there, a little bit, little bit of citrus, not a little bit, a rich citrus coming through, a little bit of pear coming through. Like I say, it's got that earthiness behind it as well. Dry back end. Nice bitterness. Taste it and something a little bit different, something the market wants. I really did like that. I like that. Um, I'm going to score that a 9 out of 10. That is a 9 out of 10 from Andy's Beer Views. That is a cracking beer. Uh, if you're in the area, visit the brewer um, or bottle shops around here. We'll all have it. And bottle shops around the country are starting to uh, bring these out uh, with for these guys. If you've had this or found myself pale, let me know what you think about them. Really appreciate the comments. So, yeah, like, subscribe. Uh, until next time, everybody, enjoy your beers. Cheers.